Hi, this is the video for lesson 5.1, which is sampling distribution of sample mean. Previously, we have learned on how to find the probability for the ads. For this lesson, we are going to find the probability for x bar, which is x bar is sample mean. The learning outcome is, by the end of this video, you should be able to explain the central limit theorem, to recognize the distribution of sample mean, and to calculate the probability of sample mean. In inferential statistic, we have parameter. Parameter is the measure for population, And we also have statistic, which is the measure for sample. And we also have sampling error, because every time we do our research, we use the sample, we actually find the statistic. So there are actually a difference in value when we find this measure of statistic and parameter. For example, x bar equals to 10. Meanwhile, the mean, mu, a okay, population mean is, for example, 10.5. So the difference, which is 0 0.5, is actually known as the error, sampling error, which is the difference between the statistic and the true value of parameter. Let us understand first on what it means by sample mean and how to actually get the sample mean. For example, we have this population data that we have one, two, three, four, five, six data here, n equals to six, and the data is 18, 18, 19, 20, 20, 21. Let's say from this population, we want a sample of two. We want to create a sample of two, right? So when we create a sample of two, it can be 18, 18, 18, 19, 18, 20, 18, 21, until 2021. So what is sample mean? Sample mean is when you find the mean of each of the sample here. So that is sample mean. And the distribution of sample means mean, we are listing out all the possible sample mean from the uh, list of sample. So for this case, for this case scenario, total data is six. That means there are total possible of 62, 15 sample. Okay, how we get 15 here? Six we select two of them. If you want to have sample size of three, there will be 63, okay? This is the number of sample size, okay? We want the sample of two. So there are actually possibility of to get 15 sample out of the six data. So what is the 15 sample here? Here I have listed the 15 possible sample from the population data just now. We have 18, 18, 18, 19, 18, 20, on to the last one, 20, 21. So to find the sample mean, what you have to do is you have to find the mean of each of the sample. So how I get 18 here? It will be 18 plus 18 divided by 2. Okay, 18 plus 18 divided by 2, 18. And how I get 18.5 here? 18 plus 19 divided by 2, 18.5. How I get 19 here? 18 plus 20 divided by 2 equals to 19. We do the same process for all the sample here, each of the sample here, and that's how you will see the distribution or the sample means here. So from this sample mean, you see they are repeating. They are the same value of mean here. And let me highlight it for you. We have the mean of 18. Okay, the mean of 18, only one year. And then we have the mean of 
18.5 here 18.5 18.5 18.5 here 18.5 here and then we have 19 here 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 and then we have 19.5 here 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 and then we have 20 this this and we have 20.5 this and this okay so how many color we see here we see one two three four and five and six and seven seven color right one two three four five and six six color here okay that means here the distribution of sample mean is you have to actually list out the possible sample mean so from the outcome just now we can get the sample mean which is we have 18 18.5, 19, 19.5, 20, 20.5. So our random variable of sample mean will be 18, 18.5, 19, 19.5, and 20, 20.5. This is a possible sample mean from the list of the outcome, from, from the list of the variable just now. So how to get the frequency? We have to count here. For 18, we only have one. For 18.5, we have one, two. So the frequency for 18.5 is two. For 19, we have one, two, three, four. We have four here. For 19.5, we have one, two, three, four. Another four here. For 20, we have one, two. And for 20.5, so we have two. The total of frequency here is 7 plus 4 plus 4, which is 15. There are 15 data, just now 15 possible sample, right? So total is 15. And how we get the probability of each of the mean here? You have to divide the frequency and the total of frequency. So for 18, 1 over 15. For 18.5, 2 over 15. For 19, 4 over 15. For 19.5, 4 over 15. For 20, 20 is 2 over 15. And for 20.5 is also 2 over 15. That is sample mean distribution. Okay, from the variable, from the sample, you find the sample mean and then you can get the frequency and you can calculate the probability of sample mean. This is the case when you are given the outcome, when you are given the data. Okay, so this is from the rough, from the, uh, from the data, original data, you take a sample and then you find the mean and then you find the frequency and then calculate the probability. All right, sample mean. That is sample mean. Okay, this is the notation that you will see later on. So previously, we only have the population. For the population, the mean of population, we did not buy mu of x, x. The standard deviation for the population, we did not buy sigma of x. And since we have now distribution of mean, okay, distribution of sample mean, that will give us the mean of sample mean, which is x bar. The mean of x bar is mu of x bar. Okay, mu of x bar. And the standard deviation of the sample mean, we did not buy sigma x bar, the notation we use. Because later on, when you want to find the probability, you actually need to know on how to find the standard deviation of sample mean. More on that will be later. Let us look at 
the central limit theorem. Central limit theorem states that irregardless of the shape of the population data, the distribution of sample mean is approximately normal. So what it mean by this? It means that when we want to find probability of x bar, it can equal to any number, we can always use normal distribution table. And to use normal distribution table, what you have to do is the same process from before this, we transform the x to become z because we have x. Now we have x bar, sample mean. So we still need to transform this sample mean to become z. And there are a formula to transform the sample mean to become z. Before I intro you to that formula, let me just um, go through this. So sample mean is normally distributed with the mean. Okay. To get the mean of x bar, it will be equal to the mean of the x, the mean of the population. But to get the mean of uh, the standard deviation of x bar, the formula will be standard deviation of population divided by square root of number of population, number of sample, not n, square root of n, sample size. Okay, so to get mean of x bar, it will be equal value as mean of population of a sample. And to get the standard deviation of x bar of the sample mean, the formula will be standard deviation of the population divided by square root of sample size n. From this theory, we can now see that to transform the value of x bar to become z or to change the x bar to become z, this is the formula now. x bar minus mean of x bar divided by standard deviation of x bar. And what is the mean of x bar? Mean of x bar is the same as mean of x, but to get the standard deviation of x bar, it will be equal to standard deviation of x divided by square root of sample size. Okay, previously, from x to become z, how you transform? z equals to x minus mean divided by standard deviation. Now, from x bar to become z, it will be z equals to x bar minus mean of x bar divided by square root standard deviation of x bar, which is equivalent to mean of x divided by square sigma of x, square standard deviation of x divided by square root of n. How we get this? This is come from the this theory. Okay, you have to follow this theory. Let us look at this example on how to apply the theory just now. Suppose that we have the weight of student in the population is normally distributed with mean and standard deviation is 60 and 10 kg respectively. So we have here the mean of population which is mu of x equals to 60 and standard deviation of population sigma of x equals to 10. A random sample of 100 students was taken. So 100 is our n. What is the probability that the average weight of this sample is more than 62 kg? So we don't want to find probability of weight. We want to find probability of average. You see the word average here? Average means the mean, mean weight. So to find the probability of average weight is equivalent to find probability of x bar. All right, read the questions carefully. If you see average mean, that means you have to find the probability of sample mean. And how we write this in notation, it will be equals to p probability when x, great, when x bar greater than 62. And to get this, by using central limit theorem, this is normally distributed where we can use the value of probability from the standard normal distribution. 
That's why we transform the x bar to become z. To do that, the formula just now, x bar to become z, it will be z equals to x bar minus mu x divided by standard deviation of x over square root of n. So x bar is 62, mu x is 60, standard deviation of x is 10, divided by square root of 100. If you press calculator, you will get this. Or I can write this as P, Z greater than 2.00. Can you get this from the table directly? No, because the table of standard normal distribution that is given to you is for less than. Okay, so this one will be equivalent to 1 minus probability when Z less than 2.00. And from the table, for 2.00, the value of probability is 0 0.9772. So it will be here, 1 minus 0 0.9772. 1 minus 0 0.9772. And it will be here equals to 0 0.0228. That is how we find probability of sample mean by using still standard normal distribution table. Another example here. The length of object X in the population has normal distribution with mu equals to 15 and sigma equals to 3. So this is mu of X and standard deviation of X. Calculate the following probability. Okay, the first one, the A here. The A here, we want to find, I do it here, probability when X greater than 17. X, not X bar, X. So for X, it will be, we just transform this X to become Z, 17 minus 15, divided by standard deviation 3, then it will be equal to Z greater than 17 minus 15 divided by 3 is 0 0.67. And this equivalent to 1 minus probability z less than 0 0.67. From the table, 0 0.67 is 0 0.7486. Is 0 0.67 is 0 0.7486. So minus 0 0.7486, the value here is 1 minus 0 0.7486 is 0 0.2514. That is for the first questions. The second questions here, find the probability that X bar sample mean greater than 17, where N is 100. So this one is not the x, this is x bar. For x bar, we still want to use the standard normal distribution table. So we have to transform this x bar to become z. How? It will be equals to x bar 17 minus mean 15 divided by standard deviation of x bar. It will be 3 divided by square root of 100. So here, 17 minus 15, 2. This will be Z greater than Okay, again, this one will be equals to 1 minus probability when Z less than 6.67. So for 6.67, we don't have in the table. But for the greater than 3.49, we should take 0 0.9999. So 
So, 1 minus 0 0.9999, then this will be 0 0.0001. That is for the second questions. The third questions, let me do in the new page. Okay, for the third questions, we want to find probability of x bar to x bar, but now x bar is in between two value, which is between 14.8 and 15.3, where n value is now 50. So to do this, of course, you have to transform the x to become, x bar to become z. It will be equals to 14.8 minus mean, 15 because mu of x bar is the same as mu of x. Okay, divide by standard deviation of x over square root of 50 to get the standard deviation for x bar. And the other side will be 15.3 minus 15 divided by 3 over square root of 15. Then this will give us 0 0.47 and I wonder Zero point seven one. So from here, if you sketch the graph, here is zero point seven one. Here is negative zero point four seven. So to get this region in between this z, it will be equals to probability when z less than zero point seven one minus probability when z less than 0 0.47, negative 0 0.7. It should be negative F1. Okay, looking at the table for 0 0.71, the value of probability is 0 0.7611. So here, 0 0.7611 minus Probability when z less than negative 0 0.47, the negative 0 0.4, and then 7 is 0 0.3192. Then this equals to 7611 minus 0 0.3192. 0 0.4419. That's how you find the probability of sample mean. Another example here, the length of leaf from trees in the forest is normally distributed with mean 75 and standard deviation 18. So here given to us mu of x, x is 75 and standard deviation of x is 18. If you randomly select a leaf, what is the probability that its length is more than 80? So first question, you want to find the length is more than 80 means the length is x, right? So we want to find probability when x is greater than 80. So this is normally distributed. We want to look at the table. So we always transform the x to become z. z greater than 80 minus 75 divided by standard deviation 18. 
then this will give us 80 minus 75 divided by 10. 0. Point probability z greater than 0. 0.28. And it will be equivalent to 1 minus probability z less than 0. 0.28. So 1 minus from the table, zero probability of 0 point less than 0 0.28 is 0 0.6103 from the table. So 1 minus 0 0.6103, it will be 0 0.3897. The B, if you randomly select 45 leaf, what is the probability that the mean length of the sample is less than 74.5? Mean X bar. You want to find probability of X bar less than, less than 74.5. So again, for X bar, we have to use Standard normal distribution table, and to use that table, we have to transform the x bar to become z. And to transform the x bar to become z, it will be z equals to x bar minus mu of x divided by standard deviation of x over square root of n. So 45 is the n given sample size. We have all the information needed. So now we transform the x bar to become z. It will be here z less than 74.5 minus 75 divided by 18 over square root of 45. So press your calculator. I get here z less than 0 0.19. Sorry, negative, yeah, negative 0 0.19. Okay. Okay. Negative 0 0.19 from the table. 0 0.1 and 9. 0 0.4247. So here it will be equals to 0 0.4247. That is the, the difference between probability of x and probability of x bar. So when you look at the questions, please read the question carefully. Whether you want to find probability of the x or the mean or average of the x. That is for the lesson 5.1. Thank you.